How's it going? Welcome back to Gamescom 2013. Alex Mendes here with Leanna Harrison, who actually does something pretty cool at, uh, at DICE. And, and uh, why don't you tell everyone back at home what you do? Hi, my name is Linnea Harrison. Linnea. I said, Linnea. I said Linnea or Linnea? It's Linnea, yeah. Did, did I butcher it, though? No, not really, actually. Everyone really. has their own little spin they like to put on it. I have the Latin like tongue, you know, just the Latin spin. I, that's what I do. Yeah. You know, what um, can I say? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. No, sorry. Uh, so I'm here at Gamescom from DICE back in Stockholm, and I'm a level artist on the multiplayer team, and I just wanted to come here and say a big thank you to all you fans that are on watching the live stream, everyone here at Gamescom that has come to support us. It's because of you that we're able to do what we do. Oh my That's been God. going on like all day. It's I, amazing. I don't have any words for it. Uh, and just this sort of reception from the fans is absolutely amazing. It actually has been pretty cool. So they're just screaming Battlefield back and forth, and uh, there you can see all the players uh, getting geared up and ready to go. That certainly has been cool. So, um, all right, so you basically you, you deal with a lot of the art in the maps and, and whatnot, and Parasol Storm yes. is a crazy map when in, in, in regards to art direction and design. I Definitely. guess first thing I want to talk about is what aspects of the map did you work on specifically, and uh, I guess what, what are your babies as we hop into the action a little bit to check oh. it out? Okay, well, this map actually is quite different from a lot of the other maps that we've been working on, and especially very different from the one that we debuted at E3. This map features a big naval focus, a big focus on the water warfare, so something that we definitely wanted to nail down early on was the water technology. The okay. shader on that and the way that that look just comes together when it shifts from this pristine sort of ocean with islands that look beautiful with palm trees to this raging sort of storm that just batters down the players with wind and rain. It's, it's intense. It's, yeah. It really is. And, and and when I look at Parasol Storm and I look at like the art direction, because I, I would like to talk about Parasol, the comparison of Parasol Storm and Siege of, uh, Siege of Shanghai. Yeah. Because they're two very differently designed maps, right? Extremely. Like, like one is a lush jungle, uh, you know, awesome islands, beaches, things like that. But Siege of Shanghai is industrial city you know browns lots of lots of that those those textures Definitely. Um, what are some of the challenges in regards to designing a map that i guess you know when, when players hop into it they're going to feel they're going to see something different every time like i guess what is, what is like that that feeling that you have when you're designing these maps let's so go ahead and jump into the action yeah. as we break this down the great thing about working on siege of shanghai and then shifting our focus to parasol storm was that we got to work on a variety of different types of art styles as you said, Siege of Shanghai is a city level where there's lots of skyscrapers and buildings and tunnels and a very sort of dense feeling to it where infantry is the focus and we have tanks rolling around, helicopters running through the, the skyscrapers and jets just going wild everywhere. Whereas this is a much more open map, we like to feel like it's a bit more open even though you are able to get some cover as an infantry. We wanted to focus on being able to get really great terrain in here, really great water, really great vegetation. And that's something that the power of the Frostbite 3 engine has really allowed us to do, is get this big spectrum from the closed cities with the giant skyscrapers to this vast open ocean environment. And I am just so pleased to be working with such a powerful tool. Yeah, yeah, Frostbite 3 is certainly shown uh you know, it, it flexes muscles quite a bit with uh, yeah. Battlefield 4. It's been a challenge actually being able to bring this new level of dynamic gameplay uh, and feeling to the levels. I mean, we brought it very strongly in Battlefield 3. Bad Company 2 introduced really great destruction. BF3 introduced micro destruction, and now we brought it to the extra level with Levolution. Yeah. And that's something that developing with that, pulling it to the next level, beating ourselves in destruction, has been difficult but very very rewarding i mean with the skyscrapers we had you know a skyscraper falling down buildings being no small about, feet yeah walls just being blown out and all the things like little tiny details like canisters being destroyed and signs being taken out it's a lot to think about and then taking it to this side where you know the waves change and become more dynamic and the trees all get destroyed the buildings that are on here completely get taken down 
it, it can really change the way you play the field. Yeah, and I do want to ask you about the evolution of like what what your uh, influence has been in regards to that. Like, like have you had the chance to work on some of the finer details of evolution, like the skyscraper and whatnot? I know that you said the the water effects was something that you worked on as well, but also the dynamic weather and mm -hmm. how that kind of mm -hmm. flowed in the map. What what's the uh, well, we have I an guess, extremely the talented there. team back yeah. at home that's been focusing a lot on evolution, but the entire multiplayer team has been helping to contribute, of course, with providing design, feedback, play testing, and really coming up with the concepts for these. Because when we started out, we weren't entirely sure what Levolution would become. When you, the players, come into the battlefield, it, it is what the game becomes. And yeah. that's why it's been extremely exciting to be here at Gamescom, to see how people are using the waves, see how people are using the containers where the doors open, and all of the things in between. Siege of Shanghai, had the skyscraper that came down, but it also had little things like car alarms that go off when you bump them, metal detectors that go off when you run under them, and people use those to their advantage. They, I, I saw people like spot another, like heard with their headphones, like they heard an alarm go off, and so they snuck around with their heat vision, and they were able to take them out from behind. And it was, it was really cool to see people using those features that we put in and seeing that really come to life. Yeah, I, I actually am pretty, uh, pretty happy with uh, you know the variety that you'll find with a lot of the maps it, it certainly has been something that i uh you know you don't see that much nowadays nowadays it's it's you know here's a map it's a you know most maps are designed in a very typical three lane format if it's a, like an arena shooter or something like right. that um with not a lot of variety in between there and this this map th this game i should say takes that kind of turns it on its head and says all right well here's this approach because Paracel Storm is a very different map. It like again, we, we spoke about it right at the start of the interview. It's a very different map uh, in like she's Siege of Shanghai. Yeah. And then when I look at uh, you know, I, I guess how you guys have uh, really kind of just brought naval combat and all that other stuff into the play, and then the water and how that greatly impacts the boats. Like it kind of just turns everything on its head, turns traditional first-person shooters on Definitely. its head with that evolution aspect. Of Definitely. It. I think that one of the things that Battlefield is really great at is that they provide provide a big variety, they, the entire spectrum from big open spaces to close quarter combats and especially with the classes, the vehicles, everything, every t type of playstyle is provided for. Like if you want to be the sniper that sits up in the tower, we've got that. If you want to be the guy that barrels through with his tank and just annihilates everything, we've got that. If you want to be the guy that's doing dogfighting in a skyscraper in the cities with your jets. Yeah. We've got that. I mean, everything. If you want to work with your squad, if you want to go it alone, we support all of those types of gameplay and allow that because Battlefield just has all of these different types of maps, all of these types of classes, and you really feel that when you play. Yeah, and that, that certainly has been a, a very awesome aspect and something I've been seeing uh, you know, all week long and also when I did the E3 live stream. Mm -hmm. So now I want to get into finer details of what you do, right? Um, and yeah. I want to talk about... Well, I guess you could say map design or what you do in the artistic realm of it, right? Yes. Now, you conceptualize a map, I'm assuming, because I've always been very interested in this, right? Like when, when you uh, start at that base level, you're like, all right, we're going to design a map space around a couple islands. Let's see how we're going to make this one look. I yeah. guess, how does that process go? I mean, is there any, any cool things you could share with the community that, that's watching right now? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, this map, for instance, started with the concept that uh, we had this great feature with the water gameplay that we had figured out was a really fun toy to play with. So we were like, we really want to put something with a lot of water. And there's all this conflict going on in the Southeast uh, Asian areas with the Spratly Islands being mm -hmm. uh, contested for by major Asian countries. So we were finding a lot of reference with that in terms of military bases set up on islands and um, a lot of sort of presences on these really tiny islands which didn't otherwise often seem to offer a lot of resources. Yeah. And so we found these islands that had just existed in the middle of the ocean and tried to recreate that. So one of the big focuses was, of course, you need really great sand textures and particles. You need really great vegetation that sells the idea that this is an island. You need really good water and you need really good weather effects. And those are something that early on we decided to nail visually and really helped us pull everything together as design-wise the map, you know, has to change as it's moving along and we have to react to how So we have daily play tests at the studio where we are playing it and giving feedback and just changing the layout in order to provide 
the most optimal gaming experience once we get it out here for you guys? Yeah, I, I could I could certainly see that there's just like this variety in, 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 in like the design of the map as a whole, right? Like mm -hmm. because the different beaches, right, they don't look the same. Uh, like for example, this this particular uh, beach right here, which if I'm correct, he's actually gonna be in the South Island here, the South looks very different here. Like I noticed that there there are like pretty much every single beach has, it like like beaches would normally do they have like your own identity yeah exactly so one thing that we thought of uh going through this was a lot of these islands are formed with rock formations so some of these as you can see have these strategic rock cliffs that you can hide inside and that was something that visually was maybe a little bit more challenging to get in but really helped sell the space and sell the entire area of these islands and the beaches coming in, you see there's like little pieces of debris that's on this beach, little rocks in the crevices up here, and just the way that the sand blends in with the rocks, yeah. that was something that really helped us all pull together. Yeah, and when, when you were designing this, right, you wanted to make sure that you had that identity, right? Every island felt unique. You kind of knew, like, where you were Yeah, in the map. so that's, that's another challenge, because if you're surrounded by ocean, it's very difficult to tell which side is which, if you're facing north, if you're facing south, which is another reason why, as you say, each island has to have its own identity. If we look at the large map again, we'll see that the North Island is very large, and it's easily identifiable from either side, which side you're on. There's a more industrial upper edge. There's a more organic side to the bottom yeah. and then the south islands are all extremely smaller more sand based yeah. and then they connect in the bottom with these bridges and a few islands which have these trenches that they have on those islands and it it really helps for you to understand where you are you never feel lost when you're in this map now i, I do want to ask you in regards to the design what was the reasoning behind not putting a bridge on every island, right? Like, why, 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 like, ignore that? At, not, I shouldn't say ignore it, but why go that route? Why, why just have two bridges here and not a bridge located here and a bridge located here? Just make it as a as a well, whole connected experience. That's a two-sided answer, actually. Uh, first off, we wanted to emphasize the water gameplay, so obviously we want to encourage players to use these jet skis that we've splink, sprinkled around the island, these rib boats that we have going around, and encourage the players that are using these boats to pick up their teammates to get to the other time, like encourage this sort of squad gameplay. Yeah. On the other hand, we also knew that swimming through the water was kind of an interesting mechanic because there you get access to your pistol, but otherwise you don't have access to most of your weapons and gadgets other yeah. than the repair tool. So this was an interesting way to sort of balance out traveling between two points versus staying where you are and holding down a position. Okay. The, the other side of this answer is that they actually didn't build the islands in a way that you could get to them all with vehicles. So some of them would have these bridges built up, but then when another nation comes in and takes over that island, they usually tear those down, okay. hold one side, and that's why there's no view. So, so, so there's like a story aspect to it, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. a big part of our job is telling a story with the spaces. Like I said, these are based on military bases on these islands, but you know, as a regular player, you might not always know about everything that's going on in the world, but you feel like this is a real place yeah. because it's inspired by these things that are going on right now. Yeah, it, it very much has that that feeling to it. And here you can see the guy actually swimming underwater. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's like swimming along. Um, but I, I, you know, that's the thing that I, I find to be particularly engaging about, you know, our direction with maps, right? Because mm. it, it, it's, it's always about like creating that feeling that where you are located is somewhere that exists in the world. Exactly. You know, that exists in the world today. And that's and, one of the reasons yeah. that it was really important for us to get this very dynamic system in with the waves, with the weather, with the lighting. As you see here in the level, it's now changed from a completely pristine desert island to this raging ocean with waves and a storm and the lighting's changed and everything is completely different. The mood is entirely different on this island. Yep. So it, it really feels like a different space. And that's something that has been extremely rewarding to work with, but also very challenging because you can't always make everything work for all situations. But I think it adds that sense of this is a real space that actually exists, yeah. that has these weather changes that isn't always exactly the same. Yep. And uh, I guess I got to say, how 
how crazy it was designing a uh, a boat crashing into an island. Like how crazy was that? That that must have, that must have been something that you guys were like. I mean, Frostbite Three is good, but man, that no matter where you go, that's a challenge. That was an extremely exciting moment. Uh, when our art director and designer decided to put that into our game, yeah. we all thought, we, we can never pull this off. How <laughs> good can we make this look? But as pieces started coming in, because that's really what building a game is like. You have all these little puzzle pieces. You have this idea in your head of what it's going to be in the end. But when you finally see it come together, when you finally see the fans playing around this crashed ship on an island, when you finally see them reacting to these images, to these, to experiencing what it's like to be next to a boat crashing into an island, that's when you feel like, wow, we've created an experience for people that's really quite important. Yeah, unique and unlike any other. So it's yeah. pretty cool. But uh, Linnea, yes. right? Yes. I want to thank you so much for your time. Awesome, awesome interview. Thank you for the insight. I've always been very interested in uh, art direction as well as map design, so greatly appreciated. And uh, I hope to get a chance to speak with you again. So uh, any Absolutely. last words? I just want to say again, thank you to everyone on the live stream, everybody that's pre-ordered. It's because of you that we're here. So thank you very much. Awesome. Well, guys, we're going to be right back after this commercial break. I'm going to rip that guy off of that station over there and get him back here to do his job instead of him actually playing a video game because, like, he thinks we're having fun here. He's uh, actually pretty good at it. Oh, no, him? I'm way better than he is. I am, uh, I am like, leaps and bounds. I'm like, leaps and don't turn around. The, come on. Yeah, right? See? Not even fair. All right, guys. So with that said, we're going to be right back after this brief commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more Battlefield 4 action coming at you with myself, Alex Mendez, and Corey Dunn. We'll see you on the other side.